A while back, I got a special care package in the mail, a very large and heavy one, from the Magnus, and it was what he uh, referred to as a Swedish heritage pack. Basically, it was a bunch of Swedish foods, treats, snacks, stuff like that, and I've been trying to work my way through it. I've already done a couple of videos. I did the unboxing video, and I did a video with some uh, Christmas stuff that was in there. I'll put links to those below. And this one I guess you could call part three, not that they're in any specific order or anything. But in this one, we're mainly going to look at some of the actual uh, food stuffs. There's still a bunch of snacks, uh, candies and sweet type things that I want to do with my daughters. Uh, but I figured we'd at least take a look at some of this stuff. And one other thing, which really does kind of belong in here, but is not going to be reviewed in this one, is this uh, interesting looking can, which is actually also very scary, because this is the infamous Sir Stroming, which Magnus was also kind or evil enough to send along. Uh, luckily, this does say it's best before February 2018, so I still have some time to figure out exactly what I'm going to do with this thing. Uh, definitely not going to do it now, because I believe, uh, from what I've heard, it's going to stink up the whole house. I kind of need to do it outside, and it's still winter, so we'll see if we eventually can do something with that. But in the meantime, most of this stuff should be pretty good. Uh, what we have here is we have a couple of cans of beer. This is what I'm really kind of most excited about. And part of the reason why it's taking me a while to get around to doing this because I wanted to do it at a time when I could also have beer with it. We have a tube of Kallis. This is creamed smoked roe. And I actually just happened to have one of these from Ikea. So we have the Swedish and the American Swedish version. And I'm actually going to use this one because it's already, it's already opened, I, since I do have it. But we have the Kallis. We have this Ansala Korv. Den Ekologiska. It's uh, ecologically sound, apparently. And this is basically a, uh, a sausage. I know it has, uh, has beef in it. This one is one of the few things that actually is past its date because it took me so long to get to it. It does have best before January 13th, 2017. And I'm filming this early March 2017. But it has been refrigerated, so hopefully that'll be okay. We also have these two jars here. These are fish. I believe they're both herring. Yeah, this one is pickled herring. This has, uh, in addition to the fish, it has uh, carrots in there, and I don't know if that's, uh, it could be some um, some sort of a lettuce or a cabbage or something like that. So it's a uh, pickled herring, and then this one is herring in mustard. And we also have to help with all of this. We have this uh, wasa crisp bread. My wife actually eats this stuff uh, all the time, so this is actually pretty familiar. Uh, basically like a, a hardtack type of thing, but that's going to be good to put a lot of this stuff on top of. And one of the more interesting things is this jar of caviar, which is really cool. I don't think I've... Uh, maybe I've had caviar once. I don't really even remember it, though. But unfortunately, when this came, I don't know if it had anything to do with um, air pressure in the airplane when it was coming over from Sweden or what, but for whatever reason, the uh, jar, uh, the seal has broken apparently, and the little pop-up lid has popped up. So I'm not sure if this is even going to be edible. And the funny thing is, since it is something I'm not familiar with, caviar, I could eat this and say it's not edible, and it could turn out that it actually is. It's pretty dry in there. Uh, we'll check it out, and we'll give it the, uh, the smell test, and I don't know, hopefully I'll get a chance to at least try that. And as I said, there are a bunch of sweets that are left over in the box. Here are a few of them. I still need to get to these, as I said, some chocolate and a bunch of different things. And also a bag of loose candy. So since I'm not doing that right now, I do have a little representation of uh, all that stuff. I figure this will go good, go good as kind of as a dessert for all the, for all the rest of the stuff in here. And Magnus also sent along a Swedish 24-hour ration, which will be reviewed, obviously, on its own. So the only thing that leaves from here is this one can, which I haven't mentioned, and this is a can of artsapa, or uh, I believe it's uh, pea soup, and this seems to have something to do with pork, extra something pork. Well, I, though I can't read it, I can use uh, Google Translate to, to at least help me, and apparently you are supposed to add water to this, two and a half cups of cold water, before uh, heating it up. So I'm glad that I did see that, because otherwise I would just pour this into a, uh, a pan and start heating it up. But we're going to go ahead and heat this up, so we can have this along with all the rest of the stuff, which can pretty much just be eaten as is. This so is our pan, and here is our hot supper. This does have a pull ring top. I 
That's pretty solid. It smells pretty good. It kind of reminds me of, um, well, to use a uh, kind of an obscure MRE term, it reminds me of the uh, the old chicken and ham loaf that they used to have in the 1980s MREs. But I guess it is, um, it does have a pea soup kind of smell to it. I'm guessing that the, that loaf smell I'm getting is having to do with the uh, pork. But it looks like I'm going to have to scoop this out of here. It's not not in a liquid state. Oh, you know what? Look at that. I'm actually kind of glad to see that. There, uh, there's the is pork in it, which I'm sure everyone who can read Swedish was well aware from the can, but I wasn't. But I'm kind of happy about that. Yeah, the more it's coming out, the more I'm smelling the uh, that, that pea soup kind of smell. It does smell like peas. Now this is the art sapa, and I'm going to go ahead and add the water to that. I'm going to go a little less than two and a half cups, though, just because um, I'm thinking I'd rather have it a little on the thicker side. But we'll mix that up, and we'll go ahead and add some heat. All right, it's looking a little bit more like soup now. It's still a little bit chunky, but it hasn't started to heat up yet. So I'm going to let that warm up, and we'll try it out. All right, here's our treats for later. We have our beers. I will wait to open those until uh, we're about to eat. Lots of bread, which we're going to need. Looking stuff there. Very dry, very light, light and airy. I don't know which is the top. Is that, I guess, I guess that's the top. And we have the Kallis, which, as I said, I'm going to use the uh, IKEA version, cream smoked row. As I said this one is already open, but it does have a little opener on the top of the cap. You just put that in there and. Squeeze that out. Magnus was kind enough to let me know that a little goes a long way with this. I kind of liken it to um, Vegemite. Now, I previously had IKEA's creamed, I believe it's salmon spread. It comes in a tube like this. It's very good. I really like it, I like having our crackers. Um, and they didn't have it the last time we went. And so I got this thinking it was basically going to be the same thing, but it's a lot stronger. It's very, very salty and very strong. It's kind of like it's, um, it's almost like it's a uh, concentrated version. So I was probably just eating too much of it. But here's what the uh, creamed roe looks like. Roe being fish eggs, basically. Caviar in a creamed form. And actually, while we're here, let's go ahead and open up the caviar. Which, as you notice, the pop didn't top because it's already been popped. And hmm, it smells fishy. Well, duh, it's fish, fish eggs. I think I'm gonna have to at least give this a little bit of a try. And it's unfortunate because I don't really know what it's supposed to look or taste like, so I'm kind of at a disadvantage here. It looks kind of dry, but I guess it is pretty. It does have some moistness to it. It's sort of like a bluish, very dark bluish, almost green kind of a color to it. Let me just try a little bit of this. Mm, considering considering it's fish, I think it tastes okay. I don't know. It's uh, it's pretty salty. Let's try a little bit on the cracker too. And then we have our pickled herring. I've actually been looking forward to this. It had a nice snap to it, luckily. Wow. Kind of smells like relish, which I guess is probably all these having to do with all these pickled vegetables that are in here. And our mustard herring. It's nice that they have a little seal on here. Ooh, it's like a grape coupon. It's a actually, it's kind of actually, it's almost like a um, like a honey mustard. It's kind of a, a sweet smell to it. I guess all that leaves us with is put these off to the side. The uh, sausage, the on solid core. There's an interesting smell coming off of all this stuff here. And another thing that I didn't know about this, and I'm very glad to have had 
Magnus to answer a couple of questions for me was that I didn't know whether the casing on this was edible or not, and apparently it's not. So that's definitely good to know. Hmm. It smells a little bit like a. Maybe it's just the casing. It smells a little bit like um, beef jerky almost. It looks like on the inside. Well, it's pretty, pretty soft. Yeah, it's got a, it's kind of a strong smell. It's a little bit like um, kielbasa almost. It smells good. I'm wondering if I can. Uh... If I can just kind of like squeeze it out of the. Actually, this coloring over here is a little bit weird. I might, I might avoid that. Let's see if I can get some of this out onto the. Uh... Yeah, it, does, it actually does a squeeze right out. Put that on the cracker. Alright, and I guess it's time to start tasting everything. Break this in half. <laughs> uh, that was kind of funny. Let me try the... Uh, the row. That's good. As I said, it's a little bit on the salty side for my taste. This is the only thing I've, of all this that I've actually had before. It's a little bit um, on the extra salty side, but it's not bad. Let's see, this doesn't exactly spread. It almost has a, a secondary skin on the inside. Let's give that a try, actually, by itself. It's got a, a slightly sweet, slightly spicy kind of a taste to it. It's not like a summer sausage, that's for sure. It looks like it on the outside. The inside's a little bit lighter. And as I said, it's um, on the soft side, so you can kind of spread it. You know, I'm almost thinking that that might actually be good with some of this um, some of this mustard on it, as odd as that sounds. Let me try that. I know I haven't tried the uh, the fish yet, but it's it's a little bit on the. It has that sweetness to it, but it's a little bland. It doesn't have a hell of a lot of flavor to it. No, it's actually pretty good. I'm almost wondering if you're supposed to have this with something else, or they traditionally have it with something else, like uh, some cheese or something. I know a lot of stuff. I think the uh, the callus, uh it's been said that you should have that on toast with... Uh, egg or something like that. So there's definitely a lot of traditions that I'm not familiar with. And now actually, I guess we'll, I could have saved this for last, but I'm going to try some of this actual genuine caviar. And I don't think I'm going to have too much of this just because the fact that it does seem like the, uh, you know, the jar was compromised. It didn't have a very good seal on it, which is really unfortunate, but hopefully this won't make me sick. Strong taste. Hmm. Not terribly pleasant, which I don't know if it's just because it's an acquired taste and I'm not a caviar person, or if it has a has turned a bit. It has a bit of a mustiness to it, which isn't. You know, I can't imagine that's supposed to be in there. But salty, fishy. No, you probably can't see this, but it's actually along the edge here. It almost looks like it has a little bit of a. It almost looks like mold. Which I'm assuming it's just because it's a little bit moister down here, and it's just where the the line is. But I think uh, I think that's gonna be the uh, extent of my caviar tasting today. Which now would be a good time to uh, introduce us to the uh, beers. I think this might not be a bad thing to wash it down with. We have this Maristad's Export. This is a um, it's pretty traditional here. Got a lot of uh, 
and all the wards down here. And um, one thing is different between these two. Uh, Magnus has sent me beers before. He, he seems to always send me different ones. I, I think I may have had this one before. I'm not sure. But he, he generally sends me different beers, so I've had I just had a chance to try a number of Swedish beers. And the nice thing about these is they're both still in date. This one is good until October 23rd, 2017. And this one, uh, August 16th, 2017. So it's nice that I didn't wait too long for these. But the one difference, main difference between these, other than they're obviously different companies and they're probably going to have somewhat of a different taste, is that this one is 5.3 alcohol by volume. And this one is extra strong, and it's 7.2. So let's see if there's any difference between those. Let's give the uh, 5.3 a taste. Cheers, or skull. Mmm, that's good. This is a, uh, a lager, which is what I like. You know, luckily I'm not getting stuff from uh, Ireland, stuff like uh, Guinness or something like that, because I have an appreciation for that stuff, but I just I just can't drink it. It's not my, my taste. I just like the uh, kind of cheap beers. But let's try the Extra Strong 7.2. See if there's any difference. Mm, that's good too. It's a slightly different flavor. I mean, the different beers. The statue on here. And this is the uh, Stockholm Fine Festival beer. We're having a little bit of a food fest here. Ah, both good. I think taste-wise, I think I like this one a little bit better. It's, I think it's just a little bit smoother just because of the extra alcohol in this one. But uh, the extra alcohol is kind of nice, too. I just went and checked on the soup, and that's almost ready. Actually, I think it is ready, but we'll, we'll go ahead and try the rest of the stuff. Let's try the, uh, the pickled herring. By Abba. Not to be confused with the uh, the group, I'm assuming. So I think the difference between this and the sastrami is the sastrami is fermented. And this is just a uh, pickled. I don't know what this is. If this is cabbage, it's like some kind of a cabbage. I'm gonna say it could be onion. Mm, whatever it is, it's pretty tasty. And now let's try the uh, the herring. A little of that stuff on there. Hmm. Interesting. I can't say I love it, but um, it's not bad. The fish is pretty soft. I think uh, the texture of the fish it's a bit of a turnoff for me. The flavor is good though. I mean, everything is just, it's just the flavoring of this pickle. It's pretty strong. Let's see if I can get one of those carrots over there. Try a pickled carrot. Yeah, whatever they use for the pickling, it's pretty strong. It's also quite salty. And I'm guessing that the mustard herring is going to be interesting, too. Of course, I did already try some of the mustard with the, uh, the sausage. Uh, let's see here. What do we got? Here it comes. Buried in there is a bit of a fishy smell. I'm trying to cut through the mustard. Cut the mustard, I guess, <laughs> as they say. That's an interesting taste too. The mustard's strong, but it's um, it's sweet. It's not not really spicy. And the fish again is uh, it's pretty on the it's on the soft side. I have one more piece. It seems to have the skin on it. Uh, texture wise, it's not great. 
flavor wise, I think it's uh, kind of an acquired taste too. It's um, not that it's terribly strong, but I'm kind of getting an idea. You know what I'm going to be in for with the pastrami, considering that the uh, the smell of this and this isn't actually unpleasant, and the thought of the uh, the texture of the fish being in a very unpleasant state and being fermented is uh it's kind of scary, <sighs> but that helps. And now why don't we check on the soup? The soup is hot. And ready to go. And you can definitely see there's some uh, ham in there. It's basically split pea and ham soup. We'll get some in a cup and uh, we'll try that out. Soup came out good. I think this may end up being my favorite part of this. Uh, if you want to call it a meal. It's a good amount of ham in there or pork or whatever it is. It definitely, as it heated up, it definitely does smell like pea soup now more than it did before. You know, I'm guessing you can add water to your to your particular taste or preference. It could be a little bit thicker. I'm trying to think what this is here. This looks like a uh, bean of some sort. I don't know if this is the pea that makes the thing up. And I'm used to green peas, but it could be what that is. Yep, that would be my guess. The pale pea. And uh, this is good. Uh, pea soup isn't really necessarily my thing, but the fact that it has some meat in it definitely helps it out. Yeah, it's hot. Hot stuff. I'm gonna try it on the uh, wasa. That's good stuff. I think everything in here has been has been good. Uh, as far as my favorite, I think the soup would come out, come out as my favorite. The sausage is pretty good. It's a bit hard to describe the flavor. Um, you know, it's a little bit like a summer sausage, it's just that the texture is a lot different. It's a lot softer. But still, it's fine. I think I'm going to go ahead and kill these beers. So I suppose that the... Uh, they kind of rank as my favorites. Yeah, it may have something to do with the fact that it's it's meat based. I have a little bit of the uh, the salmon roe mixed in here, and that actually isn't too bad going with it. The collis is good, but a little bit goes a long way. I'm used to putting um, more of it on the uh, crackers than what apparently is really necessary. And when you do tone it down a little bit, and just put a little bit on, it's pretty good. Pickled herring. I like the flavoring of the pickle juice, and um, I kind of like the uh, the little vegetables that are in here. But the uh, fish itself is uh, not crazy about the texture, and kind of the same with the mustard one. It's just uh, it's just a lot of mustard. If if you're into this, I'm sure it's great. But um, that's all. It's a lot of mustard in there to go along with the fish, and the soft, squishy, kind of chewy fish is uh, eh. It's not really, really to my liking. Just personal, just a personal taste. I'm sure it's fine for most people. And unfortunately, the biggest disappointment is the caviar. Not because caviar is bad, but because I think this caviar went a little bit bad. It just does, it seems to be a little bit off. I might actually have to go out and spend some money on some caviar myself just to uh, have something to compare it to. Let me finish up with one more. A little more quick taste just to, uh, I don't know, just to try it out again. I want to be fair, right? And some fish eggs. And luckily I still have the beer to wash this down with. I think I need 
to do that. So thank you, Magnus. This has been um, this has been very interesting. I, I won't say scary. Uh, the this is what's going to be scary, but this overall has been pretty pretty pleasant. And a nice look at some traditional Swedish foods that I might not otherwise get a chance to taste. I mean, I certainly have had pea soup, but the fact that this is Swedish pea soup from Sweden makes it a little bit extra special. Definitely. It's very comforting. Let's try these uh, sweets. Let's try these loose ones. Now these, unfortunately, they're just in that um, that bag. There's still some give to them, but they're, they're probably getting a little on the stale side. This looks like it's some kind of a black licorice. I'm kind of hoping it's not salted, but let's see. It is black licorice. It's very, very hard to chew. But it seems to be sweet rather than salted, which is actually pretty good. This I'm not exactly sure what this is. I'm guessing another kind of licorice. And that's pretty good. It's fruity. I think, um, I think I'm tasting peach in there. Peach or maybe mango. This definitely has a distinctive fruit flavor to it, though. It's pretty good. Not overly sweet, but definitely sweet. We have here nut cream. I'm guessing that's nut cream. I guess this is going to be a um, hazelnut, whatever the nut we're talking about. It's covered in chocolate, whatever it is. Mmm. Yeah, I would definitely say it's hazelnut. Wow, that's really good. Yeah, this uh, <laughs> it kind of makes up for <laughs> the caviar on some of the other stuff. This is this is incredible, actually. I do have to say that this gets better as the uh, the beers dwindle. That one's gone. The uh, Maristad. And I get another sip left in the uh, Stockholm Festival. But I do have to try a couple more things here. Marianne. Let's see what Marianne has to offer. Ooh, I didn't expect this to be white. Seems to be a hard candy. I'm gonna have to. Uh, hmm. I was hoping to uh, break it in half to see the inside, but there we go. Oh yeah, and that tastes like something. Um, hmm. It tastes like the cream on the inside of a chocolate-covered cherry. And I guess this is chocolate on the inside. That's really good. It's another one. Another good one. And this leaves us with our kex. Cloetta. Chocolade. Oh, that's interesting. Utz certified. I wonder if that's the same Utz as the uh, company that makes the uh, potato chips. Mm, I don't know. I do have a bit of sweet tooth, so, uh, is it ingredients and stuff? I do have to say that the, uh, Dessert is definitely my favorite part of this this meal, and I'm looking forward to uh, part three with all the sweets because these are uh, these are really tasty. So this kex is a uh, it's like a wafer candy bar, chocolate and wafers. Mmm, that's good too. I'm still kind of disturbed by the uh, coloration on the uh, the cap for the uh, caviar. My guess is it's just the color of the, the caviar. I don't know if they put some kind of dye in there or something, but it just looks a little bit off. But let's not dwell on the unpleasantries. Let's uh, finish up the beer. Skull. Thank you, Magnus. Thank you for watching. Whew, that's good. And we'll finish off with the rest of this one here. Alright, well thank you for joining me on this adventure, and thank you for watching, and thank you to Magnus for making this all possible.